Welcome back to the second episode of Cooking with Zach Live. Now I'm just going to wait a minute just for people to get settled in and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a delicious scallop dish with a silky cauliflower puree and what's inside this mystery syringe. If you have any guesses, please let me know. And I will be more than happy to take questions at the end of the cooking demo, you know, please, I'd be really, really happy. In fact, I'd be ecstatic to answer any, and I mean any, of your questions. So today, um, inside, I'm actually going to be doing a recreation of the dish that I had on MasterChef Junior, but sadly, you guys didn't get to see it, so I'm trying to remember as much as I can of what I did on the show. Now, inside the episode, we actually shocked oysters, but, you know, it's very, 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 and I mean, like, we, me and my mom went on a journey to find them. But it turns out you actually can't because more labor, you won't find them. But I met this super nice guy. His name is Jason from the Orlando, from one of the Orlando seafood markets. And he, he showed me a bunch of stuff about the seafood, and it was just a really, really great experience. And turns out his wife actually is certified and a pastry chef and a savory chef, which is basically impossible. So I just want to say a big shout out and congrats. So guys, it's finally time. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is be doing a silky, delicious cauliflower puree. Now, to make the cauliflower puree, here I have just a regular old white cauliflower. Now, what you can do just, just to add a little bit more presentation is do a white, and a purple cauliflower because it obviously add a really nice kind of look to the dish. Oh, a little messy, that's all right. Boom. I'm just gonna get that last bit. Set that aside. All right, now I'm just gonna kind of roughly chop this. So this would be kind of roughly, and then I'd be more finer. Now, if you were to have a little less time, you could do it uh, a little finer. But if you wanted to do a little, if it didn't really matter, then you could obviously just cut into larger pieces. Now, you can find this entire recipe on my blog, that I'm, and I'll be posting it tomorrow. The blog name, the website, sorry, is zackcarblog.wordpress.com. I already posted some gluten-free chocolate cupcakes. I actually had a request inside the previous video about them, so you can actually look that up. And if you missed my first broadcast, the burger with the tempura onion rings, I also have that recipe there. Oh, I got a little too much, that's okay. And I'm just gonna scoop up the rest of that. Cause you know, proper hygiene, right? You always wanna make sure that when you're cooking, you always keep it clean. Cause before, my mom would be like, man, this kitchen is a wreck, and I'd be like, Oops. So that's kind of how I learned to make sure that you keep a clean hygiene. All right, now I'm actually not gonna be boiling these with water. Here, come here. I'm gonna be doing it with milk. So here I have just for some regular whole milk. Now this is gonna reduce, so if you want, you can add more milk while it's reducing. So let's head on over to our stove and we're gonna reduce it. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot the, the seasoning, which is the most important part. You always want to make sure that you're tasting, constantly adjusting. Some seasoning in there. And we're gonna head on over there. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on about medium heat, so you can zoom in there. And this is a little smaller burner, but if you were to be doing it on a bigger burner, you could obviously put it on lower. All right, we're just gonna turn that down just a little bit. So we're gonna do it at about medium heat. We're gonna simmer this. We're gonna let the cauliflower cook down till it's nice and soft and it's gonna be so delicious. All right, so we're just gonna prep up and get back to our prepping. All right, so this was my mystery syringe. I don't know if you guys know what it is, but I'm gonna be showing you how to make it. So here I have my little food processor. Now you can use um, 
you, you can use a blender or anything you have at home, you know. A blender would probably work a little better, but that's all right. So I have a question. Just cauliflower in the pot? Uh, yeah, so it's just cauliflower and milk, salt and pepper, because usually people might bo boil the cauliflower and then blend it. But what the milk does is that it makes it really, really creamy and it has all this delicious flavor. Can you use coconut milk? Um, well, you actually could use coconut milk if you want. I've never tried before, but you know, that's a great thing about the kitchen, experimenting, and it's so good. All right, so back to our mystery syringe. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some basil, and you just want to kind of roughly chop that just a little bit so it blends a little nicer. Put that right in there. And then to go in that, very classic, we're going to put in some pine nuts, some Parmesan cheese. Now this is just grated, regular, everyday Parmesan cheese. The thing about this dish that I love is that it's a gourmet dish. You can do it in 30 minutes flat and it's so easy, but the best part about it, it tastes so good. All right, so to put in that, we're going to add in some lemon juice. Get that right in there. And then finally, we're gonna add in some oil. Now you can use extra virgin olive oil, whatever you like, that's my preference, especially when you're making salad dressings or the secret sauce that I'm doing. All right, so we're gonna put the lid on that and then we're just gonna blend this up till it's really nice and smooth. start to, to slow down a bit that is absolutely no worries you can either put in a little bit more lemon juice but preferably oil making a basil pesto very classic and the reason why I'm doing this it'll pair so nicely with the scallop the acidity and I actually just want to take thank Michelle for, for for tuning in you know I want to thank everyone in fact and I hope you guys can actually learn something from this what is the blender thing uh, this is actually a hand blender and then it actually came with a little food processor attachment and the reason why I'm not doing it inside the blender is because I have to do that for the cauliflower puree, but it'd probably be a little bit better to do it inside the blender. Now, what you wanna do is we're gonna put it inside the syringe, and thanks to some Periscope TV magic, I magically, it's already in there. We're gonna set that aside. Let's check on over on our cauliflower. So you can see the seasoning, the milk is reducing. And a really great way to make sure that the cauliflower is nice and soft is here, you take your fork, and right now you can obviously see it's a lot of resistance, it's sticking to the fork. That is gonna need a lot more time. So once it kind of just smooshes through it, that's when you know the cauliflower is perfection. All right. Now, another key component to this dish is a frisée salad, and we're, we're gonna be actually making our own homemade vinaigrette. Now, once again, this vinaigrette is very, very simple. Can you tell them what you're cooking again? Oh, I'm actually be, gonna be cooking pan-seared scallop, a white cauliflower puree, a basil pesto, frisée salad, and then I'm topping it off with the toasted nut for texture. So here, for the vinaigrette, I have some just regular Dijon mustard. Where do you get the syringe? And I actually got that syringe from a molecular gastronomy set. You can buy it online or whatever you have at home. All right, we're gonna add some lemon juice to that. Lots and lots of that. Some salt and pepper. Nothing too complicated, just very, very simple. 
and then we are going to whisk that up. And now this is the really, really important part. Here I have my oil. And whenever you're making mayonnaise vinaigrettes, you always want to make sure that you drizzle in the oil rather than just dumping it all in because it'll actually separate and that is not what you want. Slowly, slowly. A little bit more. What kind of oil? Um, I'm actually using olive oil today because, you know, I actually don't like to cook with, with olive oil because it has a very high smoke point. And what that means is that when you're probably cooking the scallop and you put in olive oil, and when it starts to smoke, it becomes carcinogenic, aka poisonous, and no one wants to eat poison. So the only time I would use olive oil or buy olive oil is get a really, really good quality extra virgin olive oil. And I only like to use that for sides and stuff. All right, let's put that there. And now, woof, let's check on here. Now you, now you can see for a second that it was kind of like bubbling up and all this foam was happening. Don't, do not worry, that is not a big deal at all. What it does is boiling over, not a big deal at all. What, what, what you do if it's about to fall over, you take it right off the heat and you just blow on it. And it pops right back down. Give that a quick stir. And we're just going to let that reduce. Alright, so when, whenever you're cooking, you always want to make sure that when you're cooking, you make sure that you have your texture properly, the presentation, the color, so that way you always have to think about the dish. And I actually just got a question. It was, do I do Periscope broadcast regularly? This is actually my second Periscope broadcast. And from now on, every Wednesday, 5.30 Eastern time, I will be doing my Periscope broadcast. So please be sure to tune in. And like I said, if you want to get th this exact recipe, what I'm doing today, please check out my blog. ZachCarblog.wordpress.com. I have some gluten-free chocolate cupcakes, the burger dish that I did for my previous Periscope broadcast. I mean, it's all really good stuff. So, like I was saying, you want to add texture. So, what we're going to do is we're going to roast some pecans in just a little bit of sugar. Now, you can actually eat these on your own as a really good snack. They start to turn like a little bit of, not caramelish, but they get a little sticky. And it's really, really good. All right, so here I have the pecans, and then we're just going to sprinkle in some sugar. Now, I know that looks like a lot of sugar, but it'll actually reduce, and it'll start to get all bubbly, and it'll be perfect. So here. See, the cauliflower, it's starting to boil again. Like I said, no baby. Just take it on the stove, and good. Now, it's starting to reduce a bit, and if it reduced to almost non-liquid, what you do is just add the, the milk. And the blog address is zachcarablog.org. Oh, you know what? I actually have an even better idea. You can go to my website, zach carcom and I have some really great re recipes, some tuna sashimi, and you can also, and the blog link is right there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, it's all there. All right, so here I have the pecans, and then pecans, pecans, whatever you want to call them. And then we're going to turn that on medium heat, not too high because we don't want it to burn. And, the, and if you notice something, I'm not using any oil whatsoever because we're roasting them, or toasting them, or whatever you like to call them. All right, let's head on back over there, and we're going to start prepping our scallops. All right, everyone. So here I have um, just some regular scallops that I got from my local seafood market, as I mentioned earlier. And actually on the show, I shuck the scallops, but it's very, very hard to find them. So you know what, that's no big deal. I just got these fresh from the local supermarket. And if you come in here, you can kind of see that there's some water. 
no big deal. And whenever you're cooking scallops, you always want to make sure that you pat them down dry. Because if you cook a wet scallop in a pan with the oil, what, it, what it's going to do is it's going to drop the pan temperature and then you're going to get steamed scallops rather than a nice, really, really nice crust scallop. So we're just going to pat these down. Oh, almost forgot one more glove. And reason why I'm using gloves, you know, I don't want to wash the sink, take 80 million hours to wash my hands. Pat these down nice and dry. All right, let's check on over on, on our other stuff. All right, so we're gonna check on cauliflower. Now a really great way, like I said earlier, to do this is just take your fork, you just press it down and right now, there's still kind of like a little resistance to it. So once it, see, do you see that? So once it's nice and soft, that's when you know it's ready to go. And we're just going to give these a quick stir. Let's head on back over here. Alright, so today I'm going to be seasoning these with some salt and pepper. Get some all sides. You don't want to add too much pepper because then it'll have like this pepper look on the outside of it. And, and who wants that, right? But a really great substitute to make sure that doesn't happen is if you have white pepper at home and then it won't give that kind of black color. So salt and pepper each side, just like the last one. really good seasoning and the thing about this like I said is that it's so simple but it's so gourmet it's a restaurant quality dish done in 30 minutes flat I mean the cauliflower puree is so delicious when you, I actually just started eating scallops believe it or not and I'm in love with them so they're so good and it's such an amazing easy dish let's check there See, if you notice from last time, there was still some sugar bits, but if you look really closely, you can kind of see a little bit of wetness. That, my friend, is the sugar. Oh, I'm flying. Stir that a bit. I'm just gonna add a, a tad more sugar in the pan just to be sure. And just give that a quick toss. Now these are actually starting to become a little sticky. That's no big deal, so no worries. And now, as you can see, there is no salad, sadly. So I forgot that, but it's no big deal, so I'm going to go grab it. Alright, so here I have my salad. Now, the salad I'm using today is kind of a replica of frisé, but then it's not exactly the same. I mean, you can use any kind of salad you like, romaine lettuce, iceberg lettuce, anything. Alright, let's find that frisé right up here. Now, frisé is actually endive. Some people call it frisé, others call it endive. endive sorry. I prefer to call it that. Alright, so here, here, come here and let's do this. Now you're just going to chop this part, I mean this frizz, the salad is really nice and fresh, I just got it. All these ingredients are really fresh. So let's check up on back over here. And those are just about done. Nice and toasted, and they're going to be really, really good. Stir the cauliflower, and then we're just going to check it out again. Like I said, take your fork, smoosh it. This is almost done. In fact, it is ready to go. What am I saying? All right, we're going to turn that off, and then let's head on back over. Alright, I 
I just got another question. Who taught you how to cook? Well, no, no worries. Well, I actually started to cook two years ago when I saw the first episode of MasterChef Junior, so that's kind of what inspired me. And then my mom um, started to teach me the basics, and that's kind of how I got into cooking. And I actually take online culinary school, so all these really cool tips and tricks you're getting, that's mostly from that. All right, so I'm gonna grab our cauliflower, and when you're doing this, please, please, please be careful because it is really piping hot stuff and you do not wanna get burnt. Put that all in. And then, now, my own, it looks pretty good, right? But to finish it, we're gonna add a little bit of heavy cream dust, and what this does is whenever you're making purees, you always want to finish it with a little bit of heavy cream because what it does, it makes it super shiny and it gives like this really nice shiny look to it. So we're going to add a little bit of heavy cream. And then we're also going to add some more salt and pepper. Now, like I said, you always want to make sure you're tasting, constantly adjusting because, I mean, without it, that's not how you cook, right? Add some more salt in. And then we're just gonna blend that up. Then we do it low and then slowly bring it up a little. cauliflower soup. I wanted a puree. Alright. Put that aside here. And then we're going to dump it into our bowl. Once again, using glove, do not want to get my hand all dirty. I'm like an evil scientist with these gloves. Come here and take a look at that. That's such a nice silky and it has that really great shine to it and it's perfect. Just gonna get all of that in. And we're just gonna let that cool for about a minute. Or until our scallop. Alright, Not a good move. All right, so now it's time for the moment you have been all been waiting for. We are gonna cook our delicious scallops. All right, so here I just salt and peppered them and we're gonna start heating up our pan. This Master Chef challenge. Uh, Master Chef was definitely a challenge, I mean, I was competing against the other 23 of the best home cooks, uh, ju junior chefs in America. I mean, the challenges were very tough. Gordon, Graham, Christina, don't make it easy on me. All right, so heating our pan on medium to high heat. Now, why medium to high heat? Whenever you're cooking scallops, you wanna make sure that your plan, pan sorry, is glazing hot, because then without the hot, because then, sorry, without the hotness of the pan, you won't get the sear, and without the sear, no flavor. So we're gonna let that heat up, and then we're gonna head on our back of there. All right, so I'm gonna try to plate this as best as I can for you guys on what I did in the show. All right, so first things first, we're gonna start off with our cauliflower puree. Oh, missing the spoon. So I'm just gonna take a good spoonful and we're gonna put that right on the side. And I'm a huge fan of the classic swoosh. Now, that's no big deal. I got a little clutter on the sides and we're just gonna wipe that off. And 
Now we're going to wait for the scallops and then we'll add everything else. So let's head on over there. Sorry, technical error. The mustard ball. Alright, so you can kind of feel our pan is getting hot. So we're going to add our oil in. Now scallops literally take 90 seconds on each side to cook and you should be getting a golden brown crust on each side. Alright, so the scallop, we're gonna put that roll or put that right in. Now if you were cooking more scallops, what you can do is you put them clockwise. So that way by the time you put them all in, you're almost done. The first one is almost ready to be flipped. Could you use butter? Um, I don't think that would be a very good idea. Why? Because the butter would burn. Because the butter would burn very easily. Unless you were using clarified butter, but I do not recommend that. But what you can do is baste the scalp after you flip it the first time. And then... Alright, look at that. Need just a tad bit more oil. No worries. And then you just want to kind of let the scallop god, or the seafood god, do its thing. And then hope that our scallops will be nice and delicious. And if you have any questions at the end of the cooking demo, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Anything, shoot it, type it, and hit enter. Alright, so it's almost been about a good 90 seconds. What oil? Um, this is actually peanut oil. Why not olive oil is because uh, the smoke point, it's hard to see the oil is actually smoking and it becomes carcinogenic. Alright, so we're just going to flip these. Please be careful, the oil splatters and I will get burnt myself. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn our pan just a little bit lower because you don't want them to burn and be black. And now after you're done cooking the scallops, you want to pat them dry down just in case they're a little oily, which is no big deal, but no one wants a lot of oil on their plate. And if you want to find this exact recipe measurements, please check out my website, zach-cara.com, and I have the blog right in the top corner. And if you could, I'd really appreciate it if you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I also have a YouTube channel that I'm starting up. I already posted a few videos. There's some really cool, fun videos, how to make a chocolate mousse in 15 minutes less. And there's just some really, really great stuff. Ow, that hurts. That hurts. That hurts. Alright, so I turned the pan off now. It needs about a good 45 more seconds. lemon juice. Alright, so these are just about done. Here, come here and take a look at that. Perfect. because these scalps are a little bit bigger. No worries. I mean, you guys got to experiment in the kitchen. Don't take my word for it. You guys have to go into the kitchen. If you see your steak not, is not cooked and it all depends on the size, the thickness, how hot your pan is, all that stuff. Alright, we're going to take these off.
turn that off. And then look at that. That is delicious. All right, time for the rest of the plating. So I'm just gonna let these rest for about two seconds, pat them dry down. And then while we're waiting, we are gonna finish up our delicious salad. And now I'm actually gonna be posting a video later on how to hold the knife, what kind, how to sharpen it, all that great stuff. So here you can come in here and see. I know some people, and I used to hold the knife like that with your finger, but what it does, see how wobbly that is? But what you can do is you can hold the knife like that, or what I like to use is hold it like this. It's much more stable, it doesn't move less, and you have more control over the knife rather there. Right, so we're just gonna cut that in half. And then I don't think I'll need nearly as much of this, but I'm gonna just add that in there. Just ask, somebody asked a question that you don't respond. Say, what was the question? Again? Oh, what was the question? I'm sorry, I, I really didn't see that. I'm sorry about that. So we post the question. If you could, if you could uh, just type in the question, I'd be more than happy to answer. I apologize for that. Um, just kind of, you know. All right, so here, add it into our bowl, and then just dump that in. Not too much. Because... You, know, you don't want to overdress the salad. You want to make sure that it's really well dressed, not overdone, but then not too little at the same time. All right, that is the last step to our dish, and then we're gonna plate it up. So we have the scallop. We're gonna put one, two, three. Boom. All right, and now we're gonna use a syringe. And the reason why I'm using a syringe is because if you take a food, it'd be a little bit more messier, I think. It wouldn't be as pretty. All right, so come here and let's see this. So we're just going to do a few dots. Then we're also going to try to get a better camera for these Periscope broadcasts. I'm actually using my iPad taped onto a selfie stick, believe it or not. Get that right there. Now the reason why I did the pesto and the cauliflower is because the pesto is very acidic with the with the lemon juice, the pine nuts, or whatever that is. And then the cauliflower is like that silky kind of thing that balances everything out. All right, so here I have our nut, and then I'm gonna take my little tweezers and I'm gonna find a nice good piece. One sec, sorry. Trying to find a good piece. Um, let me see. Last one. What are you making the dish for? Um. Well, this is actually the sh the dish I made on the show, but it will probably be for me. And my mom will probably be eating this after. Um, here. And then lastly, to top it off, we're going to have our nut, the honey roasted nut. And what you want to do is sometimes they might like break apart, like kind of, you just want to cook, like chop it really fast. Boom. Then we're going to top that off with the nut. One more. Oh, it broke. No worries, I got plenty extra. Last one right on top. Get those back in there. And there you have it, guys. Pan-seared scallop with a cauliflower puree, a delicious basil pesto served with a frisée salad and a honey, sorry, a sugar toasted pecan. That looks really, really delicious. Now, since I forgot to bring a steak knife with me, I'll cut it with my big knife. Oh, come here, look at all the nice juices. Perfectly cooked scallop. Mmm, that is delicious. Mmm. 
That is so good. The acidity, the pesto, and then it gets balanced out with all this really nice creaminess of the cauliflower. And I'd be happy to start taking some questions now, so shoot away. Would you be friends with my friend? She's a big fan. <laughs> I'd be absolutely t to be friends with anyone, you know. If you can check out my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you can also email me at Zach at zach .com. You know, I'm really trying to make an effort to reply to you guys on, on Instagram because I really want to be interactive with, with my fans, you know. I don't want to just like be calling and be like, oh, nice job, but then me not reply back. So I'm really making an effort to reply as much as I can. I want my kids to cook as well as you. Well, um, hmm. Just tell them to get into the kitchen, really experiment. I mean, you, you can look at my website. I'm going to be producing a bunch more, uh, uh, sorry, recipes and a few ones for kids to get started. You know, a really great snack is hummus. It's basically chickpeas, lemon juice, salt, pepper. Blend that up. You now you can serve that with some pita bread or anything. Just a suggestion, check out Carrie White for Periscope Kits. He's a great photographer. Um, I definitely have to check that out. Thanks for the advice. I really appreciate you guys trying to help me out make these Periscope broadcasts better. What is your address? I'll be right over. I want that scalp. <laughs> uh, I Thanks so much, guys. You know, I really want to keep doing these for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video. You know. What are you gonna do? And I'm also going to be doing it next week, Wednesday. So. You can't say what? Sorry? You can't say what? What are you um, doing next week? Um, I can't say what. You guys are going to have to tune in. And I just want to say thanks again to Michelle. I want thanks again to everyone who's tuned in here today. I hope you learned something. And thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to me. Oh, I got a question. Who inspired you to learn how to cook? Hmm. Well, I actually got inspired by the show, and then I was like, hmm, should I try out? And then I wasn't really camp comfortable being on camera first. And then that's when my mom and my sister really started encouraging Jack, me. They went, you should go try out on the show. And then that's kind of how I got on. I went to the open Tell call Jack, in Phoenix, just a lot of fun. If there's... Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll be... Zach, there's a person who wanted you to DM her. Can you just tell her to message you? Uh, yeah. Instagram. Uh, yeah, um, if you j if you guys want to send me an Instagram message, my username is Zach underscore Kara. Direct message. Sorry? Send me a direct message. Yeah, you, you just send me a direct message. I'd be happy to answer back to all of you guys, whether it's a question about food or just anything in general. Please let me know. So thank you guys again for watching. I will be definitely uh, oh. doing... Who is your idol? Chef Kaya. Hey, Chef Kaya. <laughs> um, huh. I like the, the, the judges as my mentor. I mean, I like a lot of people. Thomas Keller, Gordon, Graham, Christina, all of those really great Michelin star chefs. Are there any more questions? I'd be happy to answer. I think I'm going to wrap this one, guys. Thanks thanks again for watching. You know, this dish is so delicious. I mean, it's so gourmet. 30 minutes max. I mean, you can make this for your whole family, and I'm sure they'll be bound to love it. So I'll be doing another Periscope broadcast next Wednesday at 5.30 Eastern time. Thank you guys for watching. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Like me on Facebook. And if you can, subscribe to me on Periscope and YouTube. And I'm also going to be getting a new camera to do these. So thank you guys again for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this.